And talking about Moderna, uh, just out with better than expected uh, results. Joining us now, Stefan Bonsell, CEO uh, of Moderna. At the, uh, your business has its ups and downs, uh, obviously. And, you know, I wouldn't say that, that good times for Moderna are necessarily good for everyone because we know why uh, your profits and, and revenue were so much higher last year and the year before than, than this year, Stefan. But what's it like to try and navigate uh, through a, you're in a pandemic, you do six billion in revenues in one quarter. The next year, revenues are down 70 percent. Well, good morning, Joe. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm actually very pleased with Q1, and I'm happy that the company is really firing on all cylinders, not only on revenues mm -hmm. and on uh, development. So, on the revenues, of course, you know they are down their since last year. But we've always said that 23 was going to be kind of the truffle year before things go back up. As you know, COVID is not leaving the planet. We had said, you know, a minimum of advanced agreement of 5 billion. We did 1.9 in Q1. So I think we're well on our way to execute on that 5 billion. And that number did not include the U.S. You know, we're having active discussion in the U.S. with pharmacy chains, hospital chains, but also government agencies. Uh, we're having discussion with Japan for the fall of 23. We have different with Europe, you know, and more countries in Asia and so on. So, yes, it's a big change, but more than that, it's all about the pipeline. As you know very well, we have a platform company, and the pipeline is really firing on all cylinders. You know, we're going to file RSV for a launch that should be in 24. We're going to file very soon to VFDA and around the world. Uh, flu is in phase three study. We should have the data in the fall. If the data is positive, which is what we believe, we will file for also a launch in 24. As you know, we presented recently. Uh, at a big cancer medical meeting, very exciting cancer data. We believe we have a technology to change cancer care. We reduced relapse and deaths by 44% versus Ketidra alone. That's a game changer for patients. Uh, that would move very fast into phase three this year. And last night, we announced that our rare genetic disease, those drugs that go and fix, you know, replace a gene missing to those kids in the liver, uh, also is moving into expansion study where we think we have found the dose and we need to confirm that signal. And so we're really happy about where things are. It's going to be a transition year. You know, we have $16 billion of cash. So we're investing aggressively to grow the company. The, uh, <clears throat> I've got a lot to talk to you about. I'm going to have to ask you about, uh, th about your, your pay uh, last year. We, we were talking earlier about, uh, what was it? Uh, the Google. The, the Google Alphabet CEO. Alphabet CEO. Um, compared to you, I think he made about half of what, uh, of what you made last year. But, Stefan, it, you, you enter into an employment agreement <clears throat> with Moderna based on performance, and if it comes out to $400 million, I'm not, uh, for a year, I, I, on paper that looks ridiculous, but it is what it is. Uh, I mean, uh, what's your viewpoint on, how do you explain that to, you know, in a, in a you know, rising inequality world, how do you explain something like that? Can you defend it? Uh, so first, let's talk about the, the data, Joe. I think some of the media have not reporting the data correctly. I was not paid $400 million last year. What I did last year is I sold my first stock option that I got granted by the company in 2013. Why did I sell it? Because it's expiring this year. It's a 10-year grant. And so it's a grant I got 10 years ago when we're starting the company. And it's so much value because at the time, remember, Moderna valuation was maybe a couple hundred million dollars, not the company it is today. And the other thing I have done is I have actually communicated on the blog last May and I gave an update recently that after paying our taxes, 100% uh, of a gain of that grant has been granted, given to charity. And so I have no idea why the media is uh, portraying my pay last year as more than three or four hundred million dollars. That is not accurate. It's my option that I use. If not, as you know, it will have gone to zero value. And we gave everything to charity, 100 percent. So I don't know what the topic is. Well, I'm glad that uh, you're able to make that point, Stefan. That, that is obviously helpful uh, for you. The, what, what, you got six vaccine launches, all for the respiratory franchise. What, what, is that for different um, is that all? It's not all RSV. I didn't know there were six things we had. I have six things I have to worry about now. 
so uh, RSV is one, obviously. Then we have flu uh, that we just spoke about. Then there's a new COVID vaccine, okay. which will be stored in a regular fridge. As you know, the current products are frozen for all mRNA products on the market. And we have worked on a new generation uh, COVID that is now actually in phase three as we speak, that we will launch in pre-filled syringe, uh, refrigerated in the normal fridge, so that will be much easier for pharmacies to carry and so on. And then there's combination to actually make your life easier, Joe, and my life as well. Uh, I don't want every year to have to take a COVID and the flu and the RSV shot. So the combos, we think, to be able to launch the first combo in 2025 that will combine COVID and flu. And those will be, of course, adapted to the strain circulating that year. We actually even want to adapt them by the country because in the current world, as you know, sometimes the flu product doesn't really work well because there's a mismatch of strain. And so what we want to do is to be able in the US or in UK or in Japan to adapt those COVID strain and those flu strain and have them combined in a single dose so you can just walk into your pharmacy and have one shot and be set for the winter. And then we're going to add RSV to it. Another vaccine we're going to be launching is actually CMV. It's CMV, mm. cytomegalovirus. It's the number one cause of birth defect in the US. There is no vaccine available today. For 20 years, this has been the number one priority of the National Academy of Medicine. It's in phase three mm. right now. The data looks fantastic. And that's one of the vaccines we aim to launch in the next few years.